architect is often cited as one of the most desirable jobs going, but making a success of it requires skill and dedication, an A-level in something tricky like further maths, and the small inconvenience of another seven years of education. So mercifully, I'm here with a cheat's guide to the basics, helping you sound like an expert on bricks just without the mortar. Um, bored. <clears throat> or the crippling student debt. Firstly, do understand form from function, an old architectural conundrum. What matters more, aesthetics or design? Play it safe by saying form follows function, meaning that the purpose of a building should dictate how it looks. Or stand out by quipping form follows finance with a knowing eye roll as you raise your glass in a toast to yourself. Don't worry about beauty. Sorry folks, but I'm here to tell you that beauty is overrated. Joke. It's totally not. Looks are really important. But in architecture, no one really uses the term beautiful because tastes change so dramatically over time. However, do think about ugly. Ugliness is a far more interesting thing to discuss, and often it's applied to buildings that have simply fallen out of fashion and are now ripe for revival. As an amateur, vigorously defend anything brutalist, which usually means just a pile of concrete, to be honest. Either way, architects are an argumentative bunch, so just form an opinion and run with it. That said, don't call something an eyesore. It's viewed as incredibly close-minded. Remember that one generation's eyesore often becomes the next generation's conservation battle. Ground zero for those annoying online petitions to save single glazed windows from the developer's claws. If this sounds like a lot of rules about vocabulary, well, that's because it is. Therefore, do learn the lingo. Architects use a whole load of jargon incomprehensible to the untrained ear. All together now. Shame about the urban intervention by the active street frontage. We can see it from the outdoor rooms. Exactly. Try learning some of these. Instead of gardens, say outdoor rooms. Don't say windows, say fenestration. They're not shops, my friend. They're active street frontage. And that graffiti on their shutters is urban intervention. A breakout space is the proper term for when you finally manage to wedge that sofa onto your landing. And trust me when I tell you it's not unpainted, it's merely self-finished. Do know your cities. Be prepared if somebody asks you what's your favourite city for architecture. If your travels thus far have been spent sitting inside bars rather than standing outside buildings, try suggesting Venice, St Petersburg, Paris, Berlin, New York, Prague, Vienna, London, Barcelona, Glasgow or Edinburgh for an easy win. And do know your landmarks. London is the perfect example of a city skyline stuffed with landmark buildings. Commit the next few to memory and only panic when they start building something else. The Barbican. Don't say, what a concrete monstrosity. Do say, love the materiality of the rough textured surfaces. Lloyds of London. Don't say, looks like a chemical works. Do say, wow, so virtuoso historic high tech. The Shard. Don't call it, that useless spike. Do call it a mixed-use vertical city. The National Theatre. Don't say, where's the entrance? Do say, what a magnificent interplay of solid and void. Do recognise a good architect. Good architects are excellent creative problem solvers. Look for those who manage to create brilliant buildings on the most unpromising sites, or exceptional spaces inside what might seem the most unremarkable of existing buildings. Do remember to bring a bucket. Frank Lloyd Wright designed the Guggenheim Museum in New York and is widely considered to be one of the most influential and important American architects ever. Most of his buildings leaked. Good one, Frank. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to British GQ by clicking the button below.